And it's probably one of my favorite behaviors to sort of see with elephants is how powerful they are by pulling down branches, pushing trees right over and exposing the roots. Oh, but listen to him though. This is also one amazing thing to hear. Hear that crunching sound? It reminds me of summer. I don't know why it rem oh no, I do know why it reminds me of summer. It sounds like a kid chewing on an ice lolly. Oh, very nice. And they will feed a lot on the marula trees. They do hold uh, quite a lot of water in them. If you've ever chopped over open a marula tree, you'll see that. It's delicious. And he seems to be eating quite a, a fair amount of the bark too. Not the horrible outside layer, that nice fissured bark. Well, the only, only reason it is nice is for scratching. It makes for a good scratching post. But other than that, stripping that part away, and then you can see eating almost the heartwood the nice white bits. He's enjoying himself. I don't know if he's pulled this down himself. It doesn't look particularly fresh, so perhaps another elephant had already been through this area and pulled down this tree, and now he's just feeding on the remnants. But he's having a great time. He's got a bit of shade too. He's not standing directly in the sunlight. You can see all that lovely dappled light covering his body. So he won't be particularly hot, and I suppose that's why we're not seeing him flapping his ears because it is warm today. It's not a cool day, and I'm sure he's appreciating the breeze as well. He doesn't have to go too far. He can just stand around here. When he's ready to go for a drink, he hasn't been for one just yet. Maybe he would have had a splash about a little bit earlier. I can see a couple of wet patches on his body, but they've dried quite a bit. He will probably wander on back down towards Treehouse Dam and quench his thirst over there. You can hear that, all the rustling in the grass from the wind, as well as the leaves. We did have a big cold front though. There was a cold front that hit Cape Town, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And we even experienced the, the wind right up on the border of South Africa, Botswana and Zimbabwe, where I was, around Mapungupwe National Park. It was exceptionally windy. Did you hear that? I don't know if that was maybe a zebra. I heard a prrr, like a snort. Maybe there's a couple of zebra around here. Maybe there's some more elephants. Perhaps that came from the other end of an elephant. <laughs> but it is so happy. I'm so happy that we've got to see an elephant. That's our first animal, besides uh, the yellow-billed uh, hornbill, which stuck around for about two seconds when we first started off the show. So not a bad animal to start with. My favorite animal. about okay investigating trying to find the perfect piece of marula to eat don't see any more small bits now so maybe he's going to demonstrate his strength for us and break another piece I love that sound so much and that's what's so great about coming on a safari I think the first time you come on a safari not I think I know you're so excited about seeing all the animals you have a checklist you want to see certain things, certain birds, all the big five. But then the next time that you come, it's really, really quite amazing. Because you're not too worried about seeing all the big things because you got the perfect pictures on your first trip. But you start to do things like listen and smell. You start seeing things that you never noticed before. And sound is such an important thing out, out here in the bush. There you go, he's found a small bit to munch on. Isn't that delicious? Well, let's see if he's going to do the old corkscrew technique, which they love to do with the bush willows and the silver cleft leaves when they are eating the bark. No, nope. eating the entire thing. Didn't like that piece too much. And this is a fairly sort of easy tree for them to feed on. There's no thorns, the leaves are lovely and tasty, there doesn't seem to be a high tannin content in the marulas, so they can't stand here for hours on end and just constantly keep feeding off of the one tree. Now I'm just going to quickly call this elephant sighting in. <laughs> Heidi, you said that he's just chewing on a branch and dreaming a little bit. You know what, I agree, I think he's doing that. If you had to put this into a South African context, 
it would be a South African watching the rugby, probably a beer in one hand, and perhaps a stick of biltong, which is um, dried meat. It's a speciality that we have out here. You find it in any South African's cupboard. Let me call this in. Herbie, Herbie, I've got one male elephant here just on the southern road between Treehouse Dam and Shibamu. He's just static feeding on a marula. I'll just quickly call that in for Herbie. He's also out. Herbie's driving, I think, Pippa and Yuri are here, the landowners of Jury, uh, Juma, if I'm not mistaken. I think he's taking them out on a safari, so that's quite nice. I'm sure they'll be enjoying it. Come on, boy, demonstrate. Pull another big, 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 big piece of branch off, straight right up top. I remember, was it with you, Sebastian, that we had that really cool elephant sight? No, it was with Ferg on Chitwa, where we had this big Ellie bull. He was much larger, much older than the one that we're looking at now, and he stretched right up to the top and was feeding on the leaves. And then I think a couple of you took screenshots and said it looked like a dinosaur, and it was really quite amazing, the silhouette of him. It looked like a big brontosaurus which was quite nice. That's a, an amazing thing to see. We don't get to see it too often out here in South Africa, but as soon, well, not, sorry, not even South Africa, in the Sabi Sands, uh, occasionally you can, but as soon as you start heading towards the areas where there's massive anyala berries and anna trees that have all got lovely fruit and delicious pods, you'll see the elephants standing up on their, in their back legs. And an iconic place to see that, of course, is in Mana Pools in Zimbabwe but you can see it also in Mapungupwe. We actually saw an elephant do that now recently, stretching right up. And then in Zambia, at this time of the year, you see it all the time, which is quite nice. Going to feed along the edges of the river. He's so relaxed. And this is great to see these animals are so relaxed, not affected by our presence at all. <laughs> now, Gail, as we watch, and we see him stick his trunk back into his mouth. You've commented and you said that uh, you love the way that they're able, how nimble they are with those two little fingertips on the edge of their, their trunks. It is. It's really incredible. Look at that. He knows exactly which piece he wants and which wasn't going in the right way or perhaps it didn't taste as nice and we'll throw it out and move it all about. Uh, I, I love particularly watching the youngsters before they've even learned how to use their trunks. That has to be one of the most entertaining things and you can really just sit for hours and hours on end watching them. Look at that. See, those, those bits don't look too nice. I don't think they look very tasty. I would have gone for a different piece, but I suppose I should just leave it to the expert. He's been eating marula trees a lot longer than I have. He's probably even older than what I am. I'd put him at around late 20s, early 30s perhaps. He's not particularly big, like I said. He's, he hasn't got big ivory, but not all elephants get big ivory though. It's all got to do with their genetics. He's very interested. You see how it just, he keeps touching the same piece of, of the marula tree. He's done that four times now, where he, he'll eat, he'll you know take his small little bits, which he loves. He's now swatting flies that are trying to bite him but he keeps touching that particular piece. So I don't know if there's a certain scent on there that he's trying to uh, figure out what it is, or maybe some other elephants were feeding on, on this particular tree earlier. Like I said, I don't think this is, he's pulled this down. I think this was done a f couple of days ago. Looks like there's quite a bit of damage to a few of the marulas that I can't remember seeing two weeks ago, which is possible. They definitely are gonna start feeding on all of this lovely stuff. And with all the water drying out too, not just uh, the grass becoming uh, less palatable, they will start to feed on, on things that have a, a higher water content. Remember, elephants are very picky when they come to drinking water. They'll rather walk the extra mile to go and dig water in a riverbed than drink dirty water. Now, Mary, wondering if I know the size and the age of this beauty. It's hard to say. Unfortunately, we haven't been following this young lad for his entire life. So, uh, like I said, I'd put his age in late 20s, early 30s. And weight-wise, oh, it's a tough one. I mean, a big elephant bull, five and a half tons quite easily, maybe even pushing six tons. Some of the massive Tuskers and Kruger can definitely get to that. I would have to say... He must weigh about maybe four and a half tons, somewhere around there. So he's big, he's tall, 
He's, he's not quite as big as what he is yet. Another 10 years or so, and he'll be competing with the, the top dogs out here with mating with the females. Remember that beautiful big tusker we saw for about two weeks almost every single day? The, the one that chased Ali around a couple of times. He wasn't her friend. <laughs> well, made, made us giggle because every time she came back from drive, she said, he chased me again. <laughs> He didn't like the cars, that fella. But of course, he was in must. He wasn't as tolerant as what the elephants are when they aren't in must. And he was a particularly large elephant too. So I think we're going to start seeing some more of those. We just need the breeding herds to come back. They've obviously moved off constantly doing mini migrations around the sands and uh, looking for new food. But they'll be back. I'm back. I love the elephants. So I always keep asking for them. I think let's change position. Let's see if we can get a different view because he's now turned in a position, as you can see, where we can't see his face. We can just see half of his body. So let's go back onto the road again. We'll just reverse and see if we can find another gap. And if he doesn't decide to go and do anything, we'll keep going and heading down towards Treehouse Dam, have a little look. We can always come back. Like I said, he doesn't look like he's going to go too far. Right. So I'm going to try and find a good spot for us to view this elephant bull and maybe we will have a quick look around to see if anything else is here. Ali is still sitting with a beautiful tumba. It's starting to get cool now. The flies are bothering him. Surely he's going to get up.